الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون الا من اتى الله بقلب سليم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم So in order to have a pure heart that is the only thing that will benefit all of us on the day of judgment we've been saying that one thing that is absolutely necessary is to sit in the company of the people of Allah who have <coughs> achieved the purity of their hearts by sitting in the company of their mashayikh and there is a formal process of hooking oneself to the people of Allah and that is the process of taking bait and i was mentioning an ayah of the quran yesterday and that is the second last ayah of surah al-mumtahinah that when these believing women they came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they wanted to take bait with the prophet alayhi salam so allah ta'ala mentioned that in the quran that when these women idha ja'at al-mu'minat when these women believing women mu'minat they come to you why you buy your naka so that they want to take bed with you what sort of bed and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions a few sins that they will not do all of these sins in other words this is the bed of tauba this is the bed of tauba that they want to leave all of these sins and they will not commit that in the future if they've come to you with that intention fa ba'ihunna then take bed from them wastaghfir lahum allah and do you you do istighfar for them and you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very forgiving very merciful so this is the bait that our mashayikh take as well people often get confused as to what is this bait about where is where is it coming from is there any proof from quran and hadith indeed there is proof in the quran in surah al-mumtahana and there are many riwayat including in sahih al-bukhari sahih al-muslim where prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to take this bait of tauba very of very often very very common so this is the formal process of hooking oneself up with the people of allah what do these people do then what these people do is that they recommend to you a certain azkar a few zikr from the treasure of hadith they our mashayikh have chosen a few azkar of course you cannot do all you cannot do all of these azkar that have been mentioned in hadith there are many so what to do which ones to pick so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened a few azkar to our mashayikh and this is what they recommend and so there are four salasan there are four silsilas four schools of thought if you want to call it that way just like we have hanafi school and shafi and maliki and hamli school and fiqh we have in the path of self purification and the path of the purification of the heart there are few four silsilas as well which are the naqshbandi tariqa the jishti tariqa the zuhurwardi tariqa and the qadri tariqa and there are some offshoots of them as well but these are the salasil the people the mashayikh who actually founded them or i would say formalized them allah taala opened to them a few azkar that if they if they so that they could recommend them to their students to their muridin to the people who would come to them for their self development for the purification of their heart <laughs> zikr <coughs> zikr is the pure is the thing that polishes our heart allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do zikr all the time ya ayyuhal ladina amanu uzkurullaha zikran kathira that oh you who believe you do a lot of zikr it's also very interesting that wherever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned he has ordered all of us to do zikr there is an adjective that is used there is a sift that is used along with that which is kathir يا ايها الذين امنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا you do a lot of zikr wa zakirin allah kathiran wa zakiran the men who do a lot of zikr and the women 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always has used this adjective of zikr whenever he is mentioned zikr. So Allah ta'ala wants that we do zikr all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the people of Allah are those الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُونَ وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ That they do the zikr of Allah standing, sitting and laying down on their sides. Yani all the time, which is, which is the fourth state that people are in. Either they are standing or sitting or laying down on the sides. So Allah Ta'ala wants that we are in the state of zikr all the time. And this is the maqsood, this is the goal that we are trying to achieve. But in order to achieve that state of being in the zikr of Allah Ta'ala all the time, there are few askar that our mashayikh have recommended. And all silsilas have their own recommended askar. And whichever silsila you are in or you want to be from, you just take the askar of those silsilas and just hook yourself up to those. Don't mix and match. Don't say, oh, I'll take a few from there and a few from there. Because then you will be confused and you will, shaitan will come and he will try to detract you from this path. Oh, you know, I cannot do all. So just stick to whatever has been recommended. But zikr is absolutely important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that be in the state of zikr all the time. And subhanAllah, if we really look into our lifestyle in shariat, according to shariat and sunnah, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. You know what is zikr? Zikr means remembrance. Yani remembering Allah Ta'ala all the time. Yani we are never in the state of heedlessness. We are never forgetting that in reality we are the people of Allah. We are the slaves of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if you really look into, as I said, our life, when we get up in the morning, what do we do? The first thing that we have been asked to do by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to make a dua. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ma'ana ma'amatana wa ilayhi mishur. First thing, dua. Then normally what do people do? They go to the toilet to make wudu or to relieve themselves. You know, all right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that we follow sunnahs and don't just randomly go into the toilet. Make sure that you put your left foot first in. Now, relieving yourself in a sunnah way, making wudu in a sunnah way, there is a tartib, there is a sequence that you have to follow. Then you are coming out, then make sure you are also not heedless. Make sure you take your right foot first, out first. Make a dua at that time. No heedlessness. The way that you wear your shoes, you have to put your right foot first in and then the left. The way you take off, left foot first, then the right. The way you change your clothes, le- le- when you're taking off, t- left foot first and the right. When you put it on clothes, right foot first and then the left. Every single thing that is in our deen, there is a way to do that. And it is highlighting that we can never be in the state of heedlessness. Never. We always have to have this feeling that we are slaves of Allah and there is nothing, absolutely nothing that we can do by our own will. Rather, we are doing it with the, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is dhikr. This is the state that we all need to achieve. And when we achieve this state of dhikr, then all of our things will fall into the place according to shariat. And this is why the askar are recommended by the mashayib. That is why there are some ma'ulat that are told that have to be done in, you know, in the morning and in the evening. But what is the purpose? This, these askar are not the goal by itself. They are not the maqsud by itself. We are not here that, we cannot say that this is, this way if we do our mamula day and night we have achieved our goal. No. The goal is this, that how can we be in the state of, of, of dhikr remembers all the time 24-7. This is the goal. And this is how it is achieved. And then we will have our, our focus in the prayers. Then we will behave with people in the proper way. If somebody comes to me and doesn't talk to me properly, say for example, that I know that I'm a slave of Allah and there is a way to respond back to him, etc. So this is the goal, being the people of Allah 24-7, so that we can also die in the state of zikr. كَمَا تَعِيشُونَ تَمُوتُونَ Prophet ﷺ said, the way that you will live your life is the way that you are going to die. It is impossible that the people live a life of heedlessness and then they recite kalima at the end of their time, and at the end of, at the, at the end of their life. It is not possible. So this is the goal, that we live a life of remembrance of Allah and we die at death of Kalima. And this is why the Azkar recommended, so inshallah ta'ala, you know, we must have to have to have to have the understanding of this and inshallah ta'ala, all of us should hook up with one of the mashayikh and one of the sensiras and do the Azkar, the recommended Azkar that our mashayikh recommend so that we can get into that state of dhikr all the time and so that we can also die in that state. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب لا اله الا انت سبحانك اننا كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم حبب الينا الايمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر الينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اصبحنا واصبح الملك لله رب العالمين اللهم انا نسالك خير هذا اليوم فتحه ونسره وبركته ونوره وهداه ونعوذ بك من شر ما فيه وشر ما بعده ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين الحمد لله